Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. Today on Know How. What's in the box? Welcome to Know How. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballas here. And I am Megan Maroney. And we are not in the box. Uh, you'll be seeing the box in just a bit, but this is not the box part. This is the other part that comes before the box. Megan, how are you doing? <laughs> I, I am doing well. I'm glad to be back together with you. Your yes. germs. My germs are, are they're kind of in hibernation at the moment. I, I did, uh, I'm still sick. I, I did bring back something nasty from CES. Mm. Although I will mention that it started here at Twit. We explained this last week, but um, I, I think Hesay actually infected the mm -hmm. Twit family. I brought something to CES, and uh, as often happens when your body is weakened, you are much more susceptible to picking up a secondary bug, which is what I think I did. Oh, well, I, I'm glad that you're on the mend. I'm glad you're here with yeah. me, because I needed you. Well, you know why? Because we want to talk about cable management. Yes. We want to, this, this has been something that actually you have been wanting to do for years mm -hmm. because as a mother, as someone who's trying to uh, make your brand new house very pretty, you often run into the dreaded cable rat's nest. Do you want to describe what that's like? Uh, I really don't want to. It's so horrible. <laughs> if you don't, if you, you either know it and if you don't know it, then uh, I want you to, to never know it. But a lot of people charge their devices in different places. All their kids charge mm -hmm. their devices in their room. Mm -hmm. In our family, we have one spot where they have to go at night. So none of us, adults and children included, will sneak them at 1 a.m. and check our notifications. Right, yeah. And uh, what that leads up to is you having this big, nice tangle of cables and mm -hmm. chargers and extension strips it just it just it's really hard to make it look right right now there are a lot of different techniques for dealing with that some people like to spread things out so they never have a combination of devices it's always my phone's over here and my laptop's over there etc cetera, etc cetera. some people like to have everything nice and neat on a table which you know, it starts nice and neat until you disconnect something once or twice or three times, and then it starts getting into that rat's nest. Some people like to hide everything. We thought we'd go over a couple of the different techniques and, and show you some of our takes on those techniques so that you can take it home and have cable management bliss. <laughs> so first, I think, Alex, you have a picture of, this is what looks like, ah. this is after I cleaned up our station. So you see some uh, iPads, some AirPods, some um, other devices. And that, that was after I cleaned it up. That's what it looked like. And so I realized I needed something. I needed, that wasn't working, that little file thing. Okay, wait, working. before you say that though, stay on that picture, Alex. You say it's not working, but I kind of like what you've done here. You've taken some off the shelf parts, you know, some of uh, those folder racks that you get mm -hmm. from Office Depot. You've, you've stacked a couple of them together. You've got a very, very nice, uh, maybe an anchor charger, mm -hmm. uh, one of those, those 10 porters, so that you can have all your cables running from one spot. And even though you, you I know in your mind that this, this is a mess, this is so much better than what I normally have. <laughs> and I, I'm betting that is so much better than what most of our audience has. Because most of our audience, it's like, eh, it's cables. It's not supposed to look good. That actually looked moderately organized. Right. Well, it may be better, but I want best. Oh, okay. I'm trying best. to live my best tech like, life. Okay. That's no, what I'm trying no, to do. I, I can't. I can't speak against that. Uh, so first, I ordered. First, I'll show you the prefab thing. You go on Amazon. You type in family charging station. You'll find all kinds of things that uh, they will gladly take your forty dollars for. And so that is this. It's kind of nice. I mean, it's it's not all that different from the whole. Um, uh, you know, going to Office Depot and buying a folder divider thing. In fact, that's basically what it is, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a little nicer. So the cables will go under here. Nothing hides. There's like little holes there. I don't know if you can see the holes where you can keep them all rolled up in there. Um, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Let me back off the, the overhead camera here so we can get a, nice, a nicer shot. There you go. So yeah, uh, now this so can this take two tablets or laptops, a couple <laughs> of phones. Now we're seeing, actually what's happening right now, this is great is what I get a lot with the prefab stuff, which is it looks nice, 
until then... you until you want to actually put devices on it. <laughs> yeah. Because then they have to design these generically so nothing really fits. It kind of fits. Right. So yeah, you could you could tuck your cables in there. I mean, the best thing too is if you're uh, buy short cables, because I don't really need longer cables for this. But yeah, and they come out the sides. This attaches by magnets. There we go. Yeah, actually, I do like that magnet approach. Mm -hmm. That's kind of nice. Is it? Although, I'm wondering, how much weight can you put in here before it overrides yeah. the strength of the magnet and just pulls off the top? Exactly. Because this Chromebook is not a tablet. I mean, it's significantly no. heavier than a tablet. You put a couple of these and... Yeah, that's enough weight. That, that, that'll knock it right over. Right. Oh, yeah. So an iPad would probably, but this isn't big enough for me because we have four iPads and, and five bucks. phones. So yeah, so uh, uh, there it is, 40 bucks, um, eco-friendly bamboo. I do like that it has these dividers here, um, but yeah. So that's the solution if you just want to go on Amazon and spend your $40 and you only have two iPads and you don't want to put tablets, that's one solution. Uh, Burke and I traveled around to many stores. We went to Michael's. We went to Tuesday Morning, if you're familiar with that. I can't, I don't know how to describe Tuesday Morning. It's a, <laughs> it's like just stuff. It's like a dollar store on steroids. Yeah, we went to the yeah. dollar store too. And what we found was this $12 mail organizer. It's got a little chalk on there. You see there's holes in it, but but Burke drilled those holes. It did not come <laughs> with the, it did not come with the holes. Oh, okay, see? This is the other thing. I mean, so this wasn't designed to be a charging base, no. so there's no place to put the cables. No, so you can. Uh, so okay, yeah, put. That's not going to fit. It'll fit like that, but it's Yay. it's more sturdy. It's not going to knock over. Yeah, that's actually that's not bad. And how much was this? This was twelve dollars. Okay, so, so we're coming down in price. Mm -hmm. Now this doesn't have a, a magnet top, so it, it you know you can't tuck the cables underneath. But I think. This is probably something that's akin to someone, something that someone may already have in their house. Right, or they could pick up, you know, for pretty right. cheap. So, so he drilled the holes. He drilled, uh, you can see he drilled five holes here. And then what he did was he attached this anchor <laughs> USB. Okay. So, <laughs> but here's the problem. This is a two prong. I know. <laughs> so I'm probably not going to plug the entire thing into the wall. And I probably don't have a socket that will fit. So, so yeah, yeah, that was my, he, I said, what, and he said, you get an extension cord, so. Okay, okay, okay. And that, huh. it's sort, there, it, that fits, he it, left room for the extension okay. cord, then you just hide that behind you, behind the, I don't know, behind something. I get it. Also, when my children pointed out four USB holes here, five holes here. Stop gonna, making sense. You're going to need something stop it. else. <laughs> so I actually have two of these anchor. I think the other one might even be a different brand, but I put them out. You know, you can put them out on the side because I like to have the lightning cables on one side and then the USB-C or micro USB on the other side. That, that's actually something else I've, I've found with a lot of these charging solutions is they work fine until you start mixing and matching cables. Mm -hmm. uh, because I mean, like I'm getting closer to everything USB-C. My laptop's becoming USB-C, my phone's USB-C, my tablet's USB-C, most of my devices are USB-C. But like, if I may live in a house with a lot of iOS devices, I have USB-C, I have Lightning, you probably have a, a couple of micro USB. That's when this gets kind of shaky because then you're constantly threading and unthreading cables to get to the proper device. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's when you get the rat's nest. But what I like about this is it look it looks really nice. Like it looks it looks like something that I you would just like, like in my the home. Chalk. You like you the can write the, your kids' names on there if you have you know three kids like I do or three you know one kid and two adults or whatever you have. You can write their names so that that their phone goes there and that's where it always goes. It's always good if you want to keep tidy. Everything has its place and you know place for everything. Everything in its place. That's how you keep tidy. Uh, now, one of the things I dislike about any of these, and I'm not uh, no, not just the Burke box and not just the the pre bought organizer, but anything that has a slot for a device, which is, I replace my devices and they will change in size. And so what happens when I have a multi purpose charging box and I change one device and suddenly it doesn't quite fit because I know in the back of my kind of deranged mind. I'm going to be thinking, I got to fix that, I got to fix that, I got to fix that, or I have to replace it. And I don't want to be throwing out my box every time I replace one out of six devices I might carry. That's, that's a good point. Uh, is it time for the Super Burke box? I, I, think, I think we kind of have to. Okay. I think we are legally obligated. Because <laughs> we want to know what's in the box. We do want to know what's in the box. Folks, um, so Megan had this great idea of 
asking Burke what he would do if he had no constraint. And um, normally it's really a bad idea to ask Burke to do something without constraint. But this time he might have actually done something wonderful. Megan, do you want to show them what's inside the Mega King Kamehameha Burke box? Okay, so first of all, let's start with this box. This was something that was just sitting around our studio. Yeah. It, uh, You've actually seen this. This has been a set piece for years. It's restoration hardware. It's literally sitting in the corner. It's beautiful. And I think you might have something like this or go to a thrift store, like an old suitcase or, you know, an old trunk, something like that. And then you open it up. I promise wait, wait, there is nobody's yeah, head no. in there. And... Whoa. Okay, okay, see so, this. This is that technique we were talking about when you just hide everything. Yes. So uh, you, you can't see it right here. If we tilt it, if we actually, if we rotate it a tiny bit that way. Oh, no, this, this way. We t rotate it here. And you can see, ah, so Burke's put, <laughs> this is actually from the, uh, the racks here at Twit. He's got a, uh, a PDU power distribution unit. These are the switches that go to the different chargers for different devices. He's got AC power coming in the back, and then he installed all these little trays. Uh, he did, yeah. We got these, I believe we got these at Michael's. They're, um, this was, he took apart from some other thing, you can, and he hung them up here. And they already had a hole, there were, these holes were already drilled in the box that I'm um, pointing out. So there's air. Um, some of you more fire safety conscious people will say like, don't ever charge things in an enclosed non-fireproof box. I and like I get that. that. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. But this has room for bigger, hand me Here we your, go, um, Here's, let's put this in there. Hand me a big, bigger I, device. I can go sideways, there you go. Yeah, what's not gonna fit in there? I mean, a giant laptop, but you know, your bigger iPads might fit in there. I, I like that he also did this because yeah. that's good for phones, but it's also good for just USB thingies. Right. We've got Headphones. so many thingies that mm -hmm. don't fit anything. It's like, yeah, put a couple of baskets in there. Charge rechargeable batteries, all the stuff. You could even, yeah, you could stick your speakers in there that you need to recharge because everything. Well, well I mean, there. that's why you've got all that space down below. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've it, it is it is just a giant box. But what's nice about this, Megan, is you can be as sloppy inside with the cables mm -hmm. as you want to be, but then. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> This is great. This is the whole out of sight, out of mind. And you know what? You could. This is something you could have in the middle of a nice area. Mm -hmm. This you could put this in your sitting room. You could put this in your living room, and people will just think, "Oh, it's furniture." Yeah. No, it's actually charging my devices. And you can leave it open a little bit too, if you wanted to. You know, just. You and if you were really crazy about, if you have a lot of devices that that put out a lot of heat when they're charging, I, you could. Burke it a little bit more and put a fan. I mean, I wouldn't do that just because there's so much air volume in there that the, the, the heating from charging is gonna be negligible. Mm. And that's gonna be vented every time I open it to take out another device. But this is, you know, I, I gotta say, uh, when you told me you were working with Burke on this, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> sure. But I, I have to say, Burke, you did a fantastic job with this. This makes me take back everything I've ever said about you. But, well, maybe 80%, 30, 30, 20. Some of the things I've said about you are completely taken back by the <laughs> fact that you did a great job with this box. Some of them are still true, but um, yeah. So you can use all kinds of things. They have like plate racks work well. Any kind of desk, no. or, desk organizer thing, like Ikea has a bunch of stuff. Um, I, I really um, like this. The other thing you can do is replace, I think we've talked about this on this show before, replace your plugs with USB yes. Um, yes. chargers. That's another way to do it so that you just have the- You thought about doing that for your for your new home. You mm -hmm. thought about getting a bunch of the uh, electrical outlets that already had the USB plug. Mm -hmm. Did you end up doing that? I have some that are sitting there in my many, uh, my, my other box of, of projects to do with my, you know, my, my lighting, my smart lighting, all the things that I'm gonna do this year, including replace uh, my outlets because it's pretty easy to do you just have to maybe just have to remember to turn off the electricity or else you'll um, shock yourself it'll be quite shocking <laughs> quite quite shocking uh, and actually with this what I the challenge I would give to you is to look around your house and just look for things that you've had there you know old sitting chairs and tables what can be electrified what can be burkified what can be chargeified because I'm, I'm betting that you have a lot of ways to hide your devices that maybe you haven't thought of it now that you've seen what Burke's done you can probably do it too. One other thing I want to mention is when you go shopping for dividers and such, um, believe it or not, the metal frame and even the um, uh, like the wood framed mm -hmm. 
work a lot better than the plastic frame. The plastic frame, over time, they tend to deform and they, they tend to look nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to want to throw them out. But if you take metal frame and you put it into some, something like this, a project box like this, it just looks better over time. As it gets that aged look, it's, it's kind of retro. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you can send us your suggestions, because I'm sure, like, Leo uses a drawer. Like, he just uses yeah. the drawer, and he just drilled holes in the back of that. Um, that might also not be the I'm best fireproof I'm super lazy. I, uh, so I got uh, those cloth shoe holders that you put in your closet, and it's draped over the side of my, uh, uh -huh. my desktop PC. So my phones just go in there. It's perfect, the perfect size for them, no matter how big it is, because those, those are cloth, so they'll expand or contract. So all my devices, all my phones, just go drape over the side of my PC. I know that they're there. All of the USB devices that I have to charge are there, and I just look for the pocket and, and pull it out. And it's cheap, because I like cheap. So do you think that Leo's going to notice when I take this home with me? I don't think so. Actually, you know, we're always looking for more room here at the studio. Yeah, true. You, you could just, it, where this was, just put an, another Apple crate. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are useful. Yeah. Actually, that's really, Burke, seriously, this is a really good it job. It is really nice. Very well done. Um, he has another career at uh, family charging stations <laughs> called Burke, Burke's Famous Family Charging Station. I, Burke Box. I think you need to look yeah, no Burke, further. Yeah, just Burke Box. Just, just the Burke Box. Mm, okay. Burkebox.com. Yeah. Better, someone better get that URL for us. Yeah. Now, Megan, when I started putting together my entry for the uh, cable management challenge or the, the deburkification of cables, the first thing I thought about was this. This is what I think of when I think of the rat's nest. That mm -hmm. Everyone knows what this looks like. You've got a box, you've got a table, you've got something filled with every kind of cable, every kind of length, and most of them are the ones that came with the device that you purchased, right? I mean, it's, there's always a cable in the box, maybe you have a, a, a box of spare ones, but eventually they all look a little ratty, they all look a little nasty, mm -hmm. and they're very hard to detangle once you get them into this fur ball. So my first step in any sort of cable management is to get proper cables. And actually, I, this is something I learned from my networking side, from the enterprise side, because it's all too often people will just buy any sort of patch cables. I consider my patch cables, both the color and the quality of the cable, as part of my management strategy. Okay, hold on just a second. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's, <laughs> oh, yeah, that I had to be done. That. that had to be done. Out with the old and in with the beautiful. Oh. Okay, so now this these are actually not that expensive. The, the first one is a 10-pack. Uh, this is this one, a Fancer 10-pack of three-foot USB-C cables. This entire pack is going to run you about 12 bucks. And what I like about them is that they're nylon braided, which means they don't tangle that well. Mm. Uh, I mean, even when they do tangle, they, they untangle. Unlike the silicone cables, which, like, the harder you pull, the more that they get knotted. It's very hard to knot these things. Um, now, you do want to make sure you buy from a brand that is at least a little bit re re reputable because USB-C cables can blow your stuff up if they're improperly made. We haven't really run into that since the first wave of USB-C cables, but still, don't buy the bargain basement $1 cable. Get something that has a couple of reviews. Now, like you, when I'm doing cable management at home, I prefer the shorter cables because I don't want coils and coils of coils. But I also like to have a set of longer cables from when I'm on the go. Uh, my, my use case would be when I have a battery pack in my backpack when I'm walking the floor of a show, I don't want a three-foot cable because then my device is always right here. I want a six-foot or longer cable so that I can have it in front of me even as I'm charging. That's why I get these. Now, this is the unis, Unisame. This is a six-pack of six-foot USB cables. They're twice as long, but, you know, these are about $20, $19 or so. Each? And, uh, no, 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 for all oh. of them, for the entire pack. And, and again, like the other ones, they are nylon braided, so they're, they look nice and they just last a very very long time i've thrown out most of my cheap cables just because uh you you know this sometimes two cables look exactly the same but one charges a little more slowly that's just because it's a crappy cable get something that's nice get something that's consistent and you're never gonna have to worry about putting something away because it's suddenly not charging the device it's supposed to charge okay so this is the first start of the cable strategy i know it sounds silly and i know it sounds simple but too many people, when they start managing their cables, are going to start with that box of miscellaneous. That looks good on you. Yeah, really, really, they double as really earrings. It does. And, I mean, look at this. Seriously, this looks so much nicer than the ones you get out of your box, right? <laughs> right? Yes, Come it really on. does. It really does. And the nice thing about this is it's not just because it lasts longer or that it looks good, 
The color coding is important when you start having multiple devices. Mm -hmm. I talked about this. When you disconnect and reconnect, eventually they start snaking together. It's hard to know which is which. They're all white or they're all black. Well, in this particular case, I know exactly which cable starts at which port and goes to which device and runs under which cables. It makes a huge difference when you try to come back later on and fix things. Uh, anyone who's ever done any sort of data room work knows this, that when you make something visually easy to track, it makes it visually easy to manage. All right? Now, from there, we're going to need something to connect this into. Now, people know that I'm a big fan of, if I can find it, the Anchor products, just because, well, they work really well. Anchor made their name making reliable charging products. This is one we've had on before. This is an Anchor Premium 60-watt wall charger. Now, this one only does five ports. I've got four USB ports, but, and then I've got a fifth. This is PD, so this would allow me to charge like my MacBook or mm. my Chromebook, anything that's USB-C but uses a lot of power. Uh, you can get this uh, in, uh, in four ports, in five ports, six ports, up to 10 ports, depending on what you need, but I've, I've gone ahead and chosen this. This is gonna run you about 50 bucks. And again, you could find cheap ones. They have these on Amazon in a basically the same fo size format for you know half the price. But when you're dealing with power products, especially USB-C power products, I don't short on that because it's really easy to blow up an expensive device with a cheap charger. Uh, from that, what I need is I need something to make all of this look nice. I mean, this is one thing. This, this is actually a step up from what most people have. If I take these and I just plug all this stuff in and I, um, I, I use this as my cable management, that's, you know, it's probably gonna be better than just having a bunch of wall warts. Uh, at least this way it's, it's color coded. At least this way I understand which device is connected to which port. But still, just having that hanging over the side of a desk, not the nicest thing ever. So what I decided to do was to create a little something something. Ooh, should I undo these so we can try it out? Yeah. Uh, this is a little 3D printed enclosure that I've created in Tinkercad. The whole idea is it's going to hold my uh, my anchor charger and it's also going to give me some cable management, some cable strain relief and it mounts to the side of a desk. You'll notice that this is it's a little flat. So this this is designed to either double stick, use double stick tape here or use these two mounting screws and mount to the side of a desk. And what happens is if you've uh, if you've mm -hmm. got your mm -hmm. USB-C cable game going on here, mm -hmm. actually well, we can leave that one. We'll do this. This just slides right in. Wow! <gasps> I've got a hole for the uh, AC power cord right there. This hangs off the edge of the desk, and then I can use these oh. so that I can run the. Oh, oh sorry. Get that out of there. Yeah, sorry. I, you know, I probably should have unwound that before with, for the show. But they looked so pretty wound they, up. They really kind of did. And there we go. And so the, the cool thing about this is, first of all, I've, I'm uh, removing the strain from the, from the charger. I can mm -hmm. hang the charger over the side of the desk, but then it also gives me this, this sort of visible uh, uh, cue of where these cables are going. Now, this is not going to clean up your desk, but at least it, it makes the cables less of a, a rat's nest thing. Now, let me show you the way that I created this, because remember, I, I told you I created this in the midst of the CES flu. It's <laughs> actually not that hard. Alex, if you go ahead and go to my computer, this is, of course, Tinkercad. This is my, uh, my favorite program. I use this all the time. And this is an essentially a three-piece project. I've got this which I'm calling the top. And what the top is, the top is just a, uh, it's a bracket piece. So this is the, the part that's designed to hug the desk. And then I have these. These are spaced four millimeters apart, which for a nylon braided cable is exactly the size that you need. It grips it just enough so that it's not loose so it won't pop free, but not so hard that it makes the cable hard to move or it makes it you know, easy to, to break off one of the tines. Uh, I've got a little bit of a strain support in this little triangle piece. In fact, let me ungroup the shape so you can see all the different shapes that went into making this. That's the strain support right there so that I'm not putting undue um, stress on a 90 degree angle. I've rounded out my design a little bit just because I wanted it to be uh, nice and neat on the cables. But here's the key to this design. I decided that I wanted this to be usable by any of us. Uh, so even people who don't buy an anchor charger, mm. I want them to be able to use this. So I made this in three parts so that you can change these other two parts and make it specifically for the charger that you've decided to buy. You can resize it. In fact, 
I'm, I'm uh, offering these files in two formats. The first, if you go to the show page, you're going to be able to just download them and print them. That's if you just buy the same charger that I'm using. The second is as a Tinkercad link, which you can go into, make a copy, and then customize this to fit the charger that you have. It doesn't <laughs> fall out. It doesn't because these are holding it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's very smart. Okay. So if you go back to my, uh, my design here, Alex, this, this part right here, actually, let me go ahead and regroup that. One, two, three, it's going to take a while. I'm, uh, there we go. This part is designed to fit over the top of that part. So, like so. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So, what's going to happen is when I assemble this, that part is going to drop down on top of this, which I'm calling the mount. And that mount is then going to be used to mount this box. Now, I can resize this box to any shape, any size. And in fact, if I ungroup this, you'll see the component pieces that make it up. And um, all you have to do is change the dimensions, either make this taller, shorter. Uh, I, this is all stylistic in the, in the middle here. I just did something so I could have something. But this is actually incredibly, incredibly strong. Now, this is the version 3 of the box, which is only going to acquire one part. And Alex, if you go, go to the link there for the, uh, the set of screws, I, M3 metric screws, these are the same screws that I've used for so many projects here on KnowHow. So if you've done any of those other projects, you don't have to rebuy them. Okay, there you go. It will, it will contain uh, all of the carbon steel Allen bolts that you need. I'm using 28 millimeter bolts and then I'm using four nuts, and that holds everything together. Uh, now, the other thing about this is I've, re I've uh, iterated it many times. People ask me about this. This is the whole reason why you have a 3D printer. It's so that you can fast prototype. So this is actually revision three of this project. Revision one was a little bit short, and I didn't like the fact that it, uh, I felt like I was having to bend the cable so much. Mm. Revision two worked kind of okay, um, but I, I still felt that we could, like, so that's a revision one project. It, see how it's much shorter. So if, if I were to take this out, the, the problem is that the power supply, the charger, would be so close to the comb. Well, yeah, I'm calling it the comb now. Mm -hmm. It would be so close to the comb that I'm, I'd have to bend the cables at an uh, a, uh, unnatural angle, which would add stress and it makes it look not as nice. But you can print this in any filament color you want. You can make it as wide or as short as you want. You could reduce the size if you really, really only need three or four, or you could expand it. That's how I've also designed it, which is I could have, if I have a crazy amount of devices, I could double the size of the mounting comb just by cut it, copying and pasting it, and then just increase the size of the bracket to put multiple power supplies. So if I wanted to get that Anchor 10 port power supply, it would still fit on this, and it would hold it perfectly off the edge of the table. I love this so much. I think this is better than the box. Well, Sorry, well it works with what you've already got. Yes. Which is kind of nice. And, uh, you know, someone in the chat room said, well, now all I need is a 3D printer. But there's a place you can send yeah. away. So if you want to, you can take the files that I give you. Or, again, just take them and then modify them to fit your needs. And you send them to Shapeways. And Shapeways will print it up for you. And then you disassemble. Uh, and in fact, the Shapeways parts will look so much better than my parts because my 3D printer is nowhere near as good as a Shapeways printer. In fact, uh, what I'm probably going to do for the next episode, I'll, I'll find out exactly how much it would cost for Shapeways to print that up because often they charge by how much material they have to lay down, which means I can tinker this design just a little bit, maybe remove some material to make it cheaper for you to print. Now, um, if I print this on my own 3D printer, this cost me a grand total, including the screws, of about a buck fifty. Uh, so, yeah, go do that. That's less. Yeah. So, you know what? I just invented this idea in my head. If you come watch an episode of Know How, email tickets at twit.tv, then Padre will print it for you here in the studio, right? You yeah. will. Yeah, yeah, you will. I will. Wait, <laughs> I just, what? I just, <laughs> <laughs> That's my thing now. I just throw things out there and live, and you can't say no. Yeah, come come see us, and you'll uh, bring your. 3D I, you know, I, I, what I will do is actually I will print out a bunch of these, and we'll just have them as giveaways for oh. whoever comes in. That's good. Uh, yeah, I, it, I I actually did print these at pretty high resolution. That's why they they look kind of nice. Really nice. They're not going to melt or anything, right? No, I mean uh, if you get hot enough, if if you okay. get to like, but just not generally two hundred degrees Celsius, mm. um, they, they'll hot. melt. But I mean, yeah, that's you'd be dead. So the yeah. last thing you have to worry about is your cable management. Um, so then you just drill it to the side of the table or wherever, where it is. There you go. Yeah. I just love this so two much. Two mount, you know what, you can have that. 
Thank you. I, I don't have this many USB-C <laughs> devices, but it would work well with lightning cables. Uh, and, oh, by the way, uh, if you go back to the uh, the link for those uh, USB-C cables, Alex, uh, these are for USB-C, but the same companies also make lightning cables. Oh, they do. And, uh, and actually, that's something that I would recommend. If you're going to do this for a lot of different types of cables, get them from all the same company because they'll tend to look the same. Uh, I mean, if you're going to do this and if you're going to beautify all your cables, why get kind of mismatched cables? Go ahead and get them all the same. Although... I will say, if they are nylon braided to start off with, that's already a way, way start up. Mm. All right. Now, Megan, coming back from CES, this is what normally happens at the start of the year. We all start getting review gear that was at the show. You got a little bit of stuff that I think we should show off. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I did not go to CES, but I That's still... why you're not sick. I know. That's why I'm not sick. But I somehow got on the CES list, so... Uh, you put, you put me on the list? Well, I, on my on my pass, I put your address. So oh, you'll be getting all my junk excellent. mail. Congratulations. Um, so I got two products for review from a company called X-Mini, and they make speakers. They've been doing it for a while. I had never heard of them, but they uh, what I the reason why I liked the idea of reviewing these is all the speakers now, it's like, it has Alexa included. You can mm -hmm. talk to your speaker, and then your speaker is always listening to you. What if you want a speaker that is just a speaker? Uh, you know, yes, please. Um, I like voice assistance. I like voice-enabled technology. I cannot tell you how many voice-enabled showers, toilets, and washing machines I saw where I was like, why? Just, just, just why? Especially when it added $1,000 to the price of the product. I'm like, no, no, I'll, just, I'll buy a, a, a separate device and put it on top. So you're telling me that there are still manufacturers out there who don't voice enable everything. There, there are still a This few. is an amazing thing, yes. Maroney. So uh, the, the products that I'm going to show you today are available now. The stuff they showed off uh, at CES, I'll talk about that too, but that's not, they're not, not available until June. Uh, let's start with the, the, this, this tiny one, the Supa. Ooh. This is designed to look like your old-fashioned jukebox, one button. Which you, know, you know what I realized the other day? I was on campus and I thought... Most of the kids here don't have no idea what a jukebox is. <laughs> I know. That's sad. sad but it's, well, yeah. It's just, you know, it's a little, oh, it's, I like the design a lot. And I have the price in the notes, but I don't, um, I, I don't have the notes up there right now. So. Oh, I'll, I'll, that's, that's my fault. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so the Supa is uh, hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. So not cheap. It's a Bluetooth. You know, you charge so you can you can I you could take it wherever you want to go. Or I think uh, I would if I would leave it. This is not really anymore. yeah. This is not if you want portable, you get something like the Fugu. This mm -hmm. is designed to be portable. The designed to be rugged. This looks nice. I don't want to take it where it's going to get scratched up or dented. Right. Um, my phone is I think in the box still. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Otherwise, because I'll, I'll, I'll pair it to my phone. But See, I believe... even when Burke does something good, he's still messing up shows. <laughs> What's in the box? My phone. Actually, this is uh, Jason Howell's uh, Pixel 2, and we're switching. No, them no, no, no. This is your Pixel it's 2. It's my Pixel 2. You switched. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, see what this sounds like. Let me make sure that it's paired. We turn it on. Is it on? Is. Are you on? I mean, I need Help. to keep charging it. I was using it, so I have my handy fuel box boost pack charger. You know what it might have been? It's uh, sometimes the charging packs aren't giving as much power to them as yeah, they need to probably. charge and operate. Mm -hmm. Okay, Come let's on. turn it. There, there we, we go. go. Those are tones I like. Mm -hmm. And let's, it sounds like it's paired. You ready to listen to it? I, I want to hear it. You got your listening it. ears on? I want to hear this. It's not... Whoa! What was that little shift? That was going from the pixel to... So we could turn it up with one button. That's really good. Or skip the song with one button. That's... Wait, wait. You said turn it up with a button or and skip a song with a button. So if it's you the same. hold it, that's going to skip ahead in the song. If you want to stop it, you just press the button. Okay, how do I increase or decrease volume? Then you just do that. Oh, wait. No, that's skipping. Hold. So this is... The sound is great. That's a pro. The con oh, is the controls. Oh, that's... Mm. It doesn't... Yeah. I, I, I don't want to guess what I'm doing when I hit a yeah. control. That's but, not But, I mean, cool. maybe you're... Um, you like just the idea that there's one button. Come on. But, but no, I mean, no. 
here. I think we ran out of. We it's ran out of power. it's confusing me. I think my it's my oh, oh no it. no now it deep aired. Uh -oh. Well, you know what? It was on for a couple of seconds and it sounded fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do you have any information? What? Well, how many drivers or how much power does this thing actually have? Uh, it. Uh, I don't have that information. But um, maybe that is on the website we can show right now. This is not bad. I mean, I, I, could, I do kind of like the construction. I wish they had there gone with like an anodized aluminum. What's, what is surprising about this is it is a small box, but it's relatively filling. Mm -hmm. It doesn't okay. feel like a really small box. And it doesn't feel like I should be able to get those, those kind of lows from something this small. Yeah. Um, it also does have a preset EQ button on the back, so let's see. It's, it's not. See, it's probably the pairing button, but you have to hold it for three seconds instead yes. of two point five seconds. Oh no, that's the on-off button. <laughs> okay, folks. Here's the thing. You can make the best technology possible, but if your control scheme is confusing, you've done a very bad job. Wait, what did you just do? I think it unpaired. Or might have paired. <sighs> Uh, if you <sighs> if you want to go old school and use an auxiliary cable, that might be easier. It also has a micro SD. I don't know. Do people still listen to their music in micro SD cards? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've got a micro SD card in my in my wallet right now for, for with music in it. Music and well, so you could stick that in there. You don't have that. Okay. No one has. <laughs> Some people don't do that. Nobody has that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so great sound. Uh, I like the way it looks. I think the controls need it could yeah, yeah. It could be better. And and that that's actually that's what bothers me. Really good sound. So put three buttons. Seriously, it, I, we won't be offended. Just put as many buttons as the thing needs. It will still look good. It will still sound awesome. But then I'm not guessing about what I'm doing when I'm hitting your controls. All right, so here's the second one from X Mini. This is the Infinity. It's not a giant Amazon Alexa. It is the X Mini Infinity. Now I know more, a little more about the specs of these. This has four speakers and a subwoofer, I like and it's this. 360 degree sound. Okay, I will admit, I saw these folks at CES, but I kind of went past the booth because I thought this thing was one of those scent diffusers. There were so many scent diffusers, and I like, I cannot see another one. <laughs> okay, let me pair this one to the, the Infinity. We're connecting now. And this one is $400. Okay, so it's a little pricier. It little is pricier, if, but the design, I mean, you kind of have to like this design. Is it on? Uh, turning uh, it on is key. Ooh, there we it's go. It's connected. Now it's on. Okay, now let's listen to our music. Okay. And easier to use volume buttons on this one. See, look. Uh, go to the top shot here, Alex. Buttons don't destroy the look. <laughs> oh, that is really good. And you can press that M button to get different modes. So that's, yeah, that's expansion. It just did uh, uh, low-end expansion. Now, I, I, we did a quick test of this before. What I like about this is even when I turn it down, because this has always been a, a failing of Bluetooth speakers. When you turn it down, you start hearing the Bluetooth artifacts. You can't hide them. I get nothing off of this. So it's very, very clean. I, and I mean, the highs are high, the lows are low. The mid-range is very easy to, to hear and understand. I like this. $400 is actually not that bad. Now, my only question is how long does it last on a charge? Because right now, that means this thing is wireless. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question, how long it lasts on a charge. Because you could plug it into the wall. This has been, I mean, it's been unplugged for uh, a day or two, I think, um, well, after it was fully charged. It has auxiliary in and out, so Which you I can like, also, yes. you know, you can you listen to it with headphones or connect it to your stereo. You can also uh, use, if you want to spend $800, you can buy more than one and they'll connect to like a Sonos. Like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Not now, now you got me. I mean, yeah, this could be something where you keep it in your, um, like your display cabinet. And then when you want friends over where you're gaming, mm -hmm. you bring out the speakers, set it next to you, and you get that really kind of earth-shaking, room-shattering sound. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a, that's that's a really really good idea. Um, for and again, four hundred dollars in the world of speakers is nothing. So if you can give me a four hundred dollar portable wireless speaker that sounds like a wired system that looks this good, okay, yeah, I'll I'll do it. In fact, I, I will take this over the mini so much.
Yeah, the mini, I think, is it doesn't really know exactly what it is. Uh, here's the, what's coming that, that they announced at CES, the Infinity S that uh, has the removable <laughs> leather carry strap, so you could carry, it's easier to carry around your house, that offers 3D <laughs> surround sound. Uh, and the Evolve 2 is the, is the second generation wireless hybrid speaker. And that has uh, Aptex technology. Do you know what that is? Or is that just a marketing Apt, term? Apt. A-P-T-X. I, I don't know what that is. It's supposed to be improved audio and video synchronization over Bluetooth. You know, if they make this thing waterproof, it could be like a torpedo. <laughs> that Yeah, the ones that are coming out in June are also waterproof. I don't know if this, this the one with the leather case is waterproof, but the smaller portable. That's not bad. Now, I, I really wish I had stopped by. And you know what? It does, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it, it that little cone... That's what fooled me the first time. I thought uh, that's, that's why I thought it was a diffusing yeah. tower. But okay, that's not bad. And again, four hundred dollars for this one, one hundred and fifty for the for the Supra. Or no, this is the Supra. No, this is the Infinity. Infinity. <laughs> this, this is the Infinity. Infinity. And it's confusing because the company is called X Mini, and this yeah. is large. But that's the company. This is the this is the Infinity, the Supra. This is the Supra, not the Supra or Super. The Supra. I want them the name of. A speaker, the Biggie. So you have the X Mini Biggie. Uh, yeah, Let's X do Mini that. Biggie uh, or the Shorty. But they also have like <laughs> tiny portable speakers. They have a lot of different price ranges. So if you like the sound, but it's not the form factor, isn't what you want. Check out their website. Well, this is very cool. And you know, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to be bringing back little bits and pieces of CES technology. In fact, I want to bring you back when I get a product that a company called Locktech is sending me. It's a working sit stand desk. But it's also an exercise bike. Oh, I like that. You know, that would really help me live my best life, I think. I think so. Louder music is with that. Okay, no, I'm sorry. The audio listeners, you got none of that. That's why you have to go download the video. Now, Megan, thank you so very much. This has been fun. Not only did we get some X Mini largeness, not only did we get a little bit of 3D printing goodness, but we got the Burke Box. And then, seriously, what does any show need? But the Burke Box. I mean, the Padre Comb also the Padre excellent. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, if you get tired of charging your USB devices, don't forget that you can just take everything out. And, you know, this is just, it's a really good yeah. way to always look pretty. <laughs> Not really, no. Uh, now, folks, we know this has been a lot of information, and we want to make sure you can get it all in a very easy way by going to our show notes. Megan, our show notes are going to be at twit.tv slash KH. Now, the KH stands for know-how. Uh, don't forget that while you're there, you can find all of our back episodes, and you can also subscribe to the show. This is the best way to support the show. Oh, and by the way, folks, the show is going to continue long after I'm gone because Megan Maroney and Jason Howell will be taking it over. You're going to be getting way more of this into the future. Oh, Megan, where can people find you on the TWIT TV network? Uh, I host iOS Today every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. and Tech News Weekly every Thursday around 2.30 p.m. Those are Pacific times, but you can get them anytime you want. You can subscribe. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and actually subscribing is very good. And also don't forget that here on Know How... We have a very active Google Plus group. It's the best place to get a hold of us. Just go to Google Plus, look for Know How. There's a very short approval process once you ask to join. That's how I keep out the spam accounts. But once you're in, you get access to almost 12,000 Kitas. Those are our know-it-alls, people on every stage of the maker DIY journey. You can post pictures of your projects. You can ask questions. You can answer questions. You can be part of the process. And maybe your questions will end up on a future episode of know-how. But that's not the only place you can find us in the socials. Megan, where do they find you? You can find me at Megan Maroney on the Twitters. And you can find me doing my Twitter thing at twitter.com slash PadreSJ. And you can find the third member of our group. He's the man who sits in the back and he pushes our buttons. We call him affectionately Not Burke. Not Burke, where do they find you on Twitter? I'm just somewhere on there. <laughs> you can find somewhere on there at Twitter.com slash AMELF3. Yeah, 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 go follow them. <laughs> Until next time, I am Father Robert Balasser. And I am Megan Maroney. And now that you know how, go. go. I don't know, what do you do? Work it. <laughs>